Welcome back to, uh, actually welcome to the first time to my Aurelia, Dep Deputy Aurelia, uh, level 70 UVHM playthrough. And thank you for answering Hyperion's summons. Um, I was gonna wait till I was done with my Maya stuff, but I'm kinda getting close with that. Kinda just popping a few of those here and there. So I figured I would just start this, cause, uh, I wanted to. And I can do things I want to, cause it's my goddamn channel. So... I'll start by just showing her skill build here. Now I did a build video on this that I will link in the description and throw up a card or an annotation or something for you guys to check out. And it's really just about the flare. I've got a few snipers here and a striker. Uh, the knot, this is my com, the eddy, and the cryo. Uh, transfusion. And I don't know if I really need the eddy, so I might play around with some different different uh oz kits right here now. but uh yeah. i don't know Let's stick with the eddy for now can help fill my health if i need a loan i don't have a ton of health regen so i'm not gonna really do like an official pre-sequel review but i'm gonna talk about a lot of the pre-sequel stuff with this and one thing that I really like about the pre-sequel over Borderlands 2 is the beginning. I think this game starts off a hell of a lot faster, uh, more exciting with the combat. You know, those bully mons are really dumb, although these guys are kind of jokes too, as I demolish them in record speed. But also just the... I know this isn't a new game, but the crazy speed. There you are. The crazy speed at which you uh, level up. You know, getting your first skill at level three, or your action skill at level three, and then um, also getting. Uh, just more game changers to kind of move your skill tree faster. That's the other fun thing about it. And it makes just building the thing a lot faster. Whereas some of the characters in Borderlands 2, especially the original 4, have very few game changers compared to pre-sequel. And that's one area where pre-sequel really does a better job than Borderlands 2. They made a lot of progress with skill tree building. Um, just, uh, I'll go to the skill tree in a second and kind of show you what I mean. But it, the skill trees are bigger, they're more diverse. And, uh, just generally a hell of a lot funner. It also just seems to move faster. It still doesn't have perfect pacing. Right here, it gets a little slow. Or uh, you want to wait? But uh, it was kind of nice because it let you kind of explore. But what I mean by this is, you know, in Borderlands 2 for let's say Maya, who had a very standard skill tree look. So here you have two choices at five out of five skills, and the same thing in this tier. But in this tier, you would have three options, a, a game changer and two five out of fives. But then when you went down to tiers four and five, you only had one skill to choose from. Where now down here you have five skills to choose from. So it really expanded it, even though you still do have two tiers. I guess one tier with a single choice in the capstone, which I don't really count like that. But uh, it really just changed the way you can do a lot of builds and diversified your builds. Which is something I really dug. Uh, it just a lot more options and a lot more game changers. Like I said, Maya usually had one, had three game changers: Cloud Kill, Res, and Converge. Uh, Aurelia here has three here, three there, and four here. You know, so that's <laughs> seven compared to three. 
That's you a lot of life. wind Thank you. and a lot of diversity Sorry. and a lot of coolness. You know, Jack has almost a game changer at every spot he can have one. Look, these crazy bastards attack Helios. And the yeah, the the builds are just more diverse. But also the the rank skills scaled better. They learned their lessons there, which is good. Hey, just let so me talk, activate talk, the talk. Turrets take too long to we'll come out, but whatever. It's not as bad as Borderlands 2. Maybe it is. I don't know. It, it seems like it's better paced. But I am doing quite a bit of standing here. What? How? Damning signal originates Jack, you should pick up that health, though. You don't have much health. Oh, crap. Kill the turrets. Kill the turrets! Even smart back, things like uh, her shards that if there's no enemies it just comes back to you and it ends as soon as there's out of enemies rather like Maya's uh, subsequence that would just float around forever and derp out when there's no more enemies to phase lock and it goes through walls unlike Maya's phase lock. So they, they learned a lot of lessons in Warlands too and did those things better in the pre-sequel. Which is awesome. Because, I mean, that's, you know, all you can really ask for is to get better. Did I get my shard off? Oh, son of a I like to throw my action skills into uh, these cutscenes. The one place where they didn't do great on is Zarpana. I think she's a lame villain. Hey, Doc Colonel! Execute plan! I know some people disagree, but she's got, like, zero personality, zero motivation. She just kind of seems like we need a villain here. Let's put in this villain. And in general, I, I don't think they nailed the NPCs in this game. Actually, I should have qualified that. They didn't do a good job at creating new NPCs. Um, I think they did a good job with the existing NPCs. Okay, that's unnerving. I love what they did with Moxie. I love what they did oh, with Jack. Destroyed the ships. Um, I like the way they treated the existing NPCs. Um, I like all of the little Tina stuff. I like the Torg stuff. So, you know, uh, keep running. So, I, I really like on? a lot of the stuff that they did with the existing NPCs, but out of the new NPCs that they created, I think the Maris is the only one that I really kind of got a kick out of and I liked. The rest of them I kind of found kind of bland. That That's kind of a shame, because, I mean, Borderlands 1, you know, we obviously more. got, you know, Tannis, and Moxie, and Scooter, and TK Baja, and I will all these amazing NPCs. And then Borderlands 2, we got, like, Tiny Tina, and Mr. Torg, and, you know, Crazy Arrow from Borderlands 1, too. Oh, I feel like the new NPC, Sir Hammerlock, I think is really awesome. I love him. Uh, Nakiyama. Nakiyama's another one they did an awesome job with in this game. Uh, we'll get to him much later, but, uh, man, I really feel like they nailed Nakiyama. I absolutely loved what they did with him. There's Elvis. That friggin' jamming signal is somewhere down on that... But, yeah, they did... Messing up all the cool security stuff There wasn't any, like, new ones that I was really blown away with. Ah, he didn't even know what happened. I soft locked this earlier by uh, I think killing that thing too fast. I want this station and I want to save the universe. So I gotta make sure I don't kill things too fast. And just that speed that the shard moves on to the next enemies, you know? Alright, game seems to be acting. Got a lot and of us, Jacob shotguns. Oh, I'm here, Jack. I'm waiting for you. He's got a stiff neck when he runs. Welcome, customer. Don't die. That's another thing. Uh, the okay, well, increased uh, rarity on items of the day. Dear God, that was a Moonshot. huge move. Sound. Uh, I can't believe Borderlands 2 is so... It's weird that it's so bad in Borderlands 2 compared to 
what they did with this game. Escape that way. Oh, exciting! What are our chances? That's a little shot cannon. I don't know. So this is, uh, this is actually my second take of this because the game's soft locked right here for me. So hopefully it doesn't. Yep, it's gone. Cool. I've never had it soft locked. <laughs> No, did I soft lock the game by killing them too fast? God damn it, I gotta stop being so good. This is the second time I had that problem. Man, I'm overstuffed. Yeah, that's right, I got a bunch of class mods when I was experimenting with this. Wait, what's that? I might want that. And I already have that skin. Alright, so I'm gonna grab this. Quick restart and uh, hopefully kind of get past this. Also, uh, that's why I love PC. Man, I was on 360 for a long time, and uh, yeah, I'm glad I moved over because that there would have taken so long. Although it does suck, I'm gonna run through all this again. So I guess lesson learned next time. Uh, let Flame Knuckle get his reinforcements. Don't be too good. Some people say that she sucks as a character too, and holy fuck, they're wrong. She just absolutely destroys things. She's got so much raw damage. She can be hard to uh, survive with, I guess. But once you kind of get used to playing with her, she's kind of like zero in that way. Like, she's not weak, it just takes some getting used to how to play her. Also, man, look at these uh, backgrounds. So cool. They nailed those, I think. The game just, I think, looks better than Borderlands 2. And feels better. Like, it's... They did a lot of uh, engine optimizations, which I really appreciate. Because the pre-sequel just loads faster and runs a little smoother than BL2. That's the first thing I noticed. When this game came out, I was still on a uh, crappy old PC. And, uh, yeah, I really noticed the performance tweaks on this big time. Alright, let's see if this does it. Alright, that did it. We can get in the moonshot up there. Let me get the elevator. Once again, just looking at this. I mean, maybe it's just because I love space, and, but the backdrops yeah, in this game just generally look there. awesome. All right, weird idea. Uh, let me work the loading terminal. Well, this is where the pacing. They there's some really bad pacing spots in this game. Where the first time you're experiencing it, it's kind of cool, but uh, after you've played it a few times. Kinda gets annoying. Right. 
Watch your step. That'll be a hell of a fall. And the beginning of this game Seriously. definitely has them. But like Borderlines 2 has them too. This game might be slightly worse than some of those pacing issues. And they're tough to work on. I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna pretend like it's not an easy thing. I mean, in general, Gearbox has done a good job, and I know 2 k will drive me this, but uh, just speaking in generics here, um, about letting a story happen around the gameplay. You know, there's a lot of games like I think Metal Gear Solid might be good examples of where also you just sit and watch a 45-minute cutscene. You know, Borderlands cutscenes are generally pretty short. Like you. And they did do a few things in this game to uh, cut them out even more. Which helps. But uh, it's still not perfect. They could still get a lot better. Woo! We made it! Alright, we just gotta get into a moonshot. The Creed of Hyperion shall not... Yeah, Alright, yep, that's he's twice you saved my life. Uh, now we just gotta... Oh, for what the... The auto shot controls are damaged. Someone's gotta stay back and launch the pods manually. That suggests a newbie, but... Eh. Terribly sorry. I've got a hearing problem when it comes to poor people. All right, new plan. I'll stay behind. I need you down on the moon. You gotta find that jamming signal and shut it down. Otherwise, we'll never get control of the moon base and we can kiss that vault goodbye. Oh, you're not tremendously bright, are you, Don? You're certain to die up here. Yeah, you saved my life a couple of times. I'm repaying the favor. Besides, I'm a hero, baby. Self-sacrifice is part of the job. So I want to kind of listen to the dialogue there, because that's uh, another thing they did oh, kind of a good job with, uh, you know, altering the dialogue between characters, um, changing the dialogue a little bit in different playthroughs helped make them a little more tolerable. I think that was kind of moving in the right direction. Again, not perfect, and they can do better with them. I like Aurelia's lines, but... They kind of seem hacked in, where the other ones seem like they're interacting with the NPCs. She just kind of feels like she's talking, and not really talking with them. But maybe that's fitting of her character being the rich bitch, that uh, she doesn't talk with the peasants, she talks to the peasants. But I love her kind of snobbish stuff. I must warn you, Jack. The, the fact that she starts out with more money and purple weapons, and she's got skills that boost rare gun damage, but penalize common gun damage. I think all that stuff is pretty hilarious. People freaked out over that tiny teen alive. She's just a kid! Like, I'm sorry, but... I've... I've got a friend who's got a niece who's, well, I think she's just about to turn 16. But, you know, I've known her since she was, you know, a wee little baby. And, you know, she was Hello? saying shit like Tina does Hello? since she's been like 10 years Hello? old or maybe 12. It's not like kids that age don't talk like that. Well, I, can't I think people that. are just getting you're overly okay. upset. The second you open this door, all the oxygen is going to vent and you're going to suffocate. It'll hurt a lot and your eyes will pop like grapes. Or if anybody is. If anybody so, works at a middle school, plan. they'll hear when kids ready, talk like that all the, the time. Open the door and follow me to my oxygen bubble. Sound good? Don't answer. Conserve your oxygen. I used to coach uh, soccer a little bit too. The freshmen were like that. They're not too much different age of Tina. So here's Janie. The, the love or hate character, I think. Warning, People hate Janie. Well, there's the whole misogyny thing. Well, I guess not really misogyny with her, but uh, people hate her because she's all about being a lesbian, and that's what her whole character is about. And this way. Don't think about the great thing. Man, do I even want to address that? <laughs> people freak out over that. Um, I see where both sides are coming from, like. Where do I that? I'm trying to like choose my words carefully here, as you can tell. I do think they made her a little too much about that. And I would find that annoying even in a male character. I mean, I'm not upset about Axton or Hammerlock or any of the other characters like that. But Janie does lay down a bit thick. And it kind of, she kind of turns into like a one-dimensional character, and, you know, like TV 
TV has done that a lot, where you know they'll make a gay character, and that gay character is just about being gay, and they have no other qualities. And it's good that you know maybe 10, Everybody 12 good? years ago they now had characters like that just so introduce them to television, dealer. but. Who are you? You kind of got to move past that and make them actual characters. And that's what was great about, like, Hammerlock. Works for me. Um, he was a gay so character, but here? he wasn't Something just a gay a character. You know, he was a real fleshed-out character. Zero attention. A jamming signal? Haven't noticed anything like that. You might want to get to Concordia, a little city run by a fella called the Merith. Got to be somebody there who can help you. You'll need an O2 kit. Oz kits, we call them, to yeah, survive sco the journey. Scooter had some missions where you know, had to go deal with his girlfriend's and right. Well, that stuff was funny and well Even done. The breathing time, but it wasn't kind of pushed over. Like I said, generally, I love uh, the fact that Gearbox does so much uh, diversity in their characters. Uh, I think they do a fabulous job with that. And I totally, 100%, fully support that. But uh, I just don't think they nailed it with Janie. That's fine, because, you know, you don't hit a home run every time. And it's not only Janie. Like I was saying earlier, I don't think they really nailed any other NPCs in this game. I'd go with fire. I'd lose my stacks that way. That building used to be in one piece, and not lava adjacent. Kill the crackening, anyway. I said I wasn't a fan of Nina either. Nina kind of suffers the same way as Janie. She's just kind of this like stereotypical uh, Russian type character. I also I love her. Mirror. Just the fact that it's a slap. Then you've got the backhand to remember Capstone, which isn't that great. Great for breathing, double jumping, and slamming enemies. I don't see anything cool. Uh, no. That chest so usually doesn't give a shit. Life, you're gonna end someone else's. And it is a great. His name's Deadlift. He's nearby, and he's an asshole. He's also got something I'll need to get us into Concordia. Alright, so the on to Deadlift in I'm a second. I'm coming down. Just bring the broken Oz kit to me, and I'll repair it for you. I'll wait for her to come this way. It's not like I hate Janie as a character or find her intolerable. I just, I, I don't think they really nailed her. But like I said, I, I, I don't, it is partially because they made her so one-dimensional. But like I said, they kind of did that with most of the NPCs that they made new in this game. And hopefully I'll run into somewhere, uh, that's not quite the case. But they escaped when Dal's digging cut to the moon. Zarpadon? Oh, that's a pole Can I go back anyway, and get a he's car? He's got the Digistruct key for my Zoomy stations. Killing him will get you to Concordia and make my week. Win win! I'm gonna deal with these guys. I love Kragans. I think they're an awesome new enemy to fight. But what sucks is the way they did UVHM in this game. Kind of. I don't know. I don't want to say ruined the game, but it wasn't what they needed to do. A lot of people complained about Borderlands 2 UBHM because the health regen, regen, regen um, the, the massive health buff to all enemies. And at first when they talked about in this game where they're going to you know, buff shields and not just health, but um, basic enemies really didn't get a buff in UBHM, uh, trash mob. Only the badasses did, and most of the buff was onto shields. So enemies like Kragans that were really awesome in earlier modes are now just complete pushovers because they really, outside the badass ones, didn't get any kind of buff. And since so much of those buffs were uh, shield based, outside of the range, um, yeah, they just didn't get much. I love the idea of you kill them to get more. I wish Iwajira was kind of like that, like you killed him. And then he would just spawn into a bunch of like super badass or ultimate Kragans. Then you kill them, you know, they go into other badass Kragans and then, you know, so on and so on. That would have been really cool, in my opinion. They're also good for XP farming. If you guys are kind of struggling leveling up and need to find things to kill in this game, Kragans are really good options. Because there's just so many of them. You know, as you kill them, you get more 
very good for leveling up and getting XP. Just not because that big XP number, but the massive amount of little XP numbers you get. Sometimes, you know, quantity beats quality. In that case, Kragans are a good way to farm. And especially uh, with you as you're right there. You can, uh... You know, kill all the Kragans around you as you then go kill him. And that really, uh, boosts your... Once again, look at this backdrop. That really increases... Uh, the amount of XP you're getting per I love the mass amount of kill skill uh, ridiculousness she gets. With uh, adding the cryo to all your basic shots just puts her damage over the top. And whenever I crit, I you know, increase the length of my action skill. And then the more I do with it, the faster it goes down. Not to hit the pad, god damn it. Sometimes you're so used to playing games you just kinda burn through them. Like uh right after Sanctuary leaves in Borderlands 2, when you uh, meet stalkers for the first time, you gotta go through the highlands, you know go over their bridge and get the constructor. So many times I've gone all the way down there and then forgotten to hit the fast trap. So many times. I also think Deadlift is pretty hilarious. So Deadlift is kind of like our Captain Flint. And uh, way cooler Captain Flint. Um, I don't know, I think Captain Flint's a really boring fight. And uh, Deadlift's really interesting and fun. Uh, learning jump pads for the first time I think is a blast, but uh, having a boss like that I think is pretty great. He's a, he can be a challenging boss. I think boss design in this game is also better. Um, Bozen, Deadlift... I just think they're a little more interesting. Uh, I think the final boss of this game is way more interesting than... Wait, I did. Okay. Why are those Hyperion screwbags still alive? Like Wilhelm's kind of boring. The warrior is alright, but uh, like I said, I think the end boss in this is way cooler. Get some health back. From just my cryo, I didn't get the transfusions there. That was cool. What if I have a shock grenade for this guy on me? The jump pads are sweet. I love them. Some people bitch at me this game more like a platformer or whatever. I don't know. I, I... It's still a first person shooter. I think it just gives a new element to it. Alright. Let me check my grenades here. Uh, uh. Hmm. 
Yeah, I don't really need that though. What to sell, what hmm. to keep. I'm actually gonna throw on the explosive well the cryo one, I might need that for healing. I don't know. Whatever. I'm gonna go with this. Ooh, but I probably have a shock Snyder. Or would I be better off with a... Oh damn, I forgot I had this gun. I haven't even never uh, really used that gun. Maybe I'll play with that with deadlift. Until I get close with him and bust out my main gun. Drop a shield a little bit from range. Sounds like a good idea. But yeah, I think he's a cool fight. guys are showing up now. Oh boy. Almost missed those. You gotta watch out for his orbs. They can fuck you up. And now that his shield's gone... Where is my player? Die, please. Oh. Oh. On the rock. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that was a good hit. He's really easy with a sniper, Aurelia, because uh, you can just rip, nail him from the distance so easily. But you see, once I got in range to land some hits on uh, Crit, you just see the massive amount of damage she does. It's disgusting. I like that we still uh, get things out of toilets. Remember some people complaining about like some low brow humor in this game and gearbox should be above that kind of stuff. You get loot out of toilets in this game. Like, seriously you expect gearbox to have like high standards and high class and complain that their humor was too low brow. You loot fucking toilets. Like, you can't get more toilet humor than that. Like, literally looting our toilets. shards all the way over there doing the good work. I love the shards um, I don't know how far I'm gonna go in this first episode but, uh, I'm having fun so I'm not really planning on stopping I'm not gonna stop and do a lot of side quests but this one just makes sense it's just not really out of the way this is the last will and testament of Tom Thorson doll captain Deadlift scabs are boarding my ship as I speak. I think I Whoever finds this echo, please write it in your heart to honor a doomed man's last wishes. Just press the next message button when you're ready. Avenging the innocent. At least you learn a little bit about Zerba now with this quest. For sure. Why not? Thanks. First off, I need you to inform Colonel Zarpadon of my death. Plug this echo recorder into a transmitter and convey the message. All right. Moving along. This was an old dial colony way back, but then the Kraken happened. Yeah, to me the Mom issue with this game is one, there's no OPA. Two, mobs just aren't dense enough. You know, Kragans are about as dense as it gets, but since they didn't really get a buff in UVHM, they're kind of just pushovers. And I, I don't want to have to like nerf myself and use like crappy boring guns. I want to use like cool fun guns. 
But most people you run into will say But then your build just kind of overpowered as you can kind of see. I guess stories don't have to be true to Although I haven't brought this build all the way through the game, told. so... There will probably be a few things that give me a challenge. The end boss might be tough. Um, as much as I like the final boss, and I think it's a really cool design, the stages, and all that, the first stage is kind of suck, because it's just all shield, no crit spot, and it limits a lot of, like, cool builds and stuff that I like on that. Um, especially, like, cryo builds don't really work for shit, because shields resist cryo, and cryo builds just suck on the final boss. Especially the green version. That, that's kind of lame. And Aurelia is really a crit character. Um, you know, it really can suffer on that first stage of it. Or this can reach them. There it can. like the combat flow of this game a whole shitload. I love the skill trees, I love at least the look of the maps. Um, I have the one problem is the maps aren't quite as linear as they are, or not linear, circular as they are in BL2, which kind of blows. And that's got a bit of a negative effect. And then there's really no great mobbing maps. That's that's where they screwed up UBHM. There's not Dorsen's a lot of great mobbing in this game and good Though runs to do that on. I didn't really get upset by the non-farmable bosses like some people. But you told the Colonel of my death. I should put on the Skull Masher. I've got some Duchess stacks. I think I have the Skull Masher. Yeah, that is it. I'd like you to avenge me. It looks like squat, deadlift lieutenant, is boarding my ship right now. There's a few good sniping spots. I'd appreciate it. And she's a sniper after all, even though I'm doing a shotgun build. I guess that's a bit out of the range of the skull masher at this point. I thought I had enough stacks to make that ridiculous, but... No, not landing a lot of pellets. Well, that was just a terrible place. Stay. <laughs> I, I like that my little uh, shards went and hit him from this range. Come on, where are you hiding? Alright, screw that guy. Swap timing. Also, plus times I think have for the combat. Okay. Final request. I need you to find a guy named Nell. I think there's still a guy over here. Where did he go? Did he come over here? I knew there was a guy over there. Well, I'll go get Nell and go on. There's the dot. Have I been seen how Excel? Tell him he's a dick. I've been asked to tell you you're a dick. Oh, once again, a really rocks. Let's see if that'll go find him. Where did that guy That's go? That's that. Sorry I can't get there you on board, but you know, I'm dead. Still, thanks. Vault Hunter, I want to thank you for to? fulfilling Captain Thorson's last wishes. Head to the following coordinates. <laughs> Skull Masher can be uh, crazy good on her in a full sniper build. Oh, I didn't get my reward. I'm doing uh, terrible with that stuff right now. Just kind of getting ahead of myself. Just kind of having fun playing, though, so that works.
probably call it an episode after I get uh, back to Jamie. See if I uh, fail the Mizumi jump. Them back. I really don't care for the moon zoomies, but uh, the stingrays I think are pretty sweet. They're just fun to drive around. I like that you can spawn them off of each other. And just uh, single player, like small vehicles that you can have four of. Ignore that. Just smack it. Good slap. But make sure to stop by. I got something yeah, these things get you into Concordia. Maybe you can find Once I get a proper stingray, I just never touch these things station. again. Survived. That was me high fiving myself. They're looking for me, so I gotta go radio silent. Ooh. Find the I don't have a boost signal, anymore. Down, and return to uh, nice, I still made it. I had enough of speed left over. I was worried that I boosted too early. Alright. Cruising along. Although these things do move a decent uh, pace here. Maybe they did a better job with the speed of these. I think they're faster than the Stingrays. I don't know. I just like the Stingrays. I find them fun. Good to see ya. Here, take this. It's an Orbitron. It'll get you into Concordia. Alright. Just jump that crap with your vehicle and you'll be well on your way to Concordia. I might as well go to Concordia. Whatever, this might run along. Or whatever you said. I'll meet you there later. Watch me fail this jump now. Which I have seen happen. In fact, I think I did that once. I think they buffed the the jump of these vehicles because a bunch of people were dying on those and complaining. Off to Concordia. I think I might actually call it here because uh, kind of just getting Concordia starting takes a little bit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call the video here and then I'll do Concordia here on the next video. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and uh, I'll be continuing this series. But uh, I won't forget about my Maya series. I'll still sprinkle those in as well. See you guys later. Bye.